Good morning, I hope you're having an amazing day. It's Mark Weens, I'm in Sigiriya in central Sri Lanka and have a very special day today. We are gonna climb up Sigiriya Rock, which is one of the most important, one of the most culturally significant and historically significant uh, icon sites in Sri Lanka. And then once we climb and get down, Ruzena from the Minority Taste, she has arranged for us to go to a local family to experience a local, authentic, home-cooked meal. So we're gonna start climbing the rock. I'm really looking forward to it and then come down and have a special home-cooked meal ahead of us. Very thin, like rice vermicelli. We've got an egg, curry, Whoa. and this is the polo sambal. All right, mix a little bit of everything. We're gonna pop open that boiled egg. Get some of the, you can see the curry leaves, you can see the onions in here. It's like a mild, soothing breakfast. Okay, we gotta move. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, okay, we made it. You ready for the, the morning hike? Yes! <laughs> bright and early? Yep, it's not <laughs> it's a, bright yet. <laughs> oh yeah, it's, it's quite a misty, foggy morning, but we're starting, yeah. we wanted to start early to number one, beat the, the crowds. And the heat. And number two, beat the sun. Yeah. So we're on our way, it's about 7.30 a.m. Uh, they say it takes about two and a half hours round trip from the top to the bottom. Packed. It's like beyond, you know? Yeah, it's beautiful to walk into the palace, especially in the early morning. We're just getting our first view of the rock. It's about 660 feet high, about 200 meters high. And right now it's just, there's mist at the top. It's in the clouds. It's like, it has a mystic feel to it. We've made it to the base of the rock. This is the beginning. This is the start of the climb. How many steps did you say it is? Uh, about 1,200. <laughs> We've just done four, five. <laughs> the actual construction on the rock dates back to the fifth century. 10 minutes in, finally getting actually to the base of the rock. You can see this is the, this is the main rock. Oh well, you can see the, there's a spiral staircase that goes up there. Oh yeah. <laughs> Starting to drip in sweat. Okay, just made it up to the next flight of stairs and there's kind of a terrace uh, plateau area, but this is the lion's paw terrace. Uh, so if you look, you can see these two huge lion paws which come out of the side of the rock, built into the brick. Um, and then you see the staircase going up to the top of the rock, but those ancient paws, it's, it's pretty spectacular. Literally just goes like straight up the side of the rock steps, but you can see the ancient foot marks. You can see where uh, they climbed up the face of the rock, just like little foothills on the cliff. That took exactly 27 minutes at a semi fast pace. It's a good thing I've been eating a lot of rice and curry to power this this hike. Uh, but yeah, it's not even that hot, but this the sweat just drips, the humidity, the jungle surrounded by the jungle. It's just whew. High five. <laughs> yeah. This is the central palace. This is the very top uh, where the central palace was. The views, you see the 360 views, it's impressive. You see this is the morning sun coming up, the morning breeze. But what's, yeah, what's most impressive is just how surrounding, there are small little hills, but it's mostly flat. Um, and you just see the canopy of the forest the, with this single rock formation just jutting into the sky. Okay, so just to give you a little more history so that we learn more about the rock and the history of the rock before we go eat. Uh, the rock in the top of this plateau was designated as a spot for King Kaspaya, 
Kayaspaya, I think that's how you pronounce it, um, in the year 477 to build his palace on top of this rock. In order to get to the top though, the king had to be carried by four or maybe even more men up the side of the face of the rock to get to his palace up here. When the king died, the entire palace and rock was just sort of abandoned, and that's the mystery. Nobody really knows what happened. But then later throughout the centuries, all the way into the 14th century, it was a Buddhist, occupied by a Buddhist temple. Um, and then after that, it's just been a, a landmark, a historical site. Uh, but the, the main mystery is after the king, how the entire civilization just collapsed and just like disappeared. on our way to a village where we're gonna have a home-cooked meal and eat some delicious food. Hello, how are you? Okay, we made it to the village. We made it into the family home. They've welcomed us in. It's a traditional style Sri Lankan home from the central region, region of Sri Lanka with the mud walls with, I think they're uh, coconut branch uh, roof structure. And then the kitchen is back there. It's a little bit dark though. So they have another uh, fire going inside the, with a little bit of more, more light. That's where we're gonna do the cooking. You can tell that you can trust these aunties with the cooking. I'm not totally sure what's all on the menu for today yet. Uh, but Rosanna just said that everything that they're gonna cook is all, all what they grow, all fro local from here. So they grow crops, they grow rice, they grow vegetables, local ingredients, and also like for local, like right in your backyard. That is the best kind of ingredients that you can ever eat. That's some skill. You gotta be careful with your fingers though. You just slice it, but it, it's pretty effective. Uh, but then she has a pan of, a clay pan of meat, which is a wild deer, which they caught a few days earlier in this in this region. And I think they they smoked it and fried it to preserve the meat, but that's what they're also what they're gonna serve us, what they're gonna cook for lunch today. She pre-seasoned with all the spices, the turmeric, the cumin, the black pepper, the chili powder on there. And then that's like pre-seasoning before it's gonna get cooked. The region doesn't pick up. <laughs> Started with coconut oil, waited till that boiled. Then she added in a spoonful of mustard seed. She added in onions and garlic, curry leaves, and then salted fish. Cover goes on, that's gonna simmer for a while. That's gonna like cook until all the juices flow, until that eggplant is mushy creaminess, I can already tell. But yeah, she has to really control that fire. Using the fire, she blows on the fire to get that flame going to boil it. Uh, it takes patience, it takes skill and experience. And I think she's gonna get started on the, the deer pretty soon. There's both the smoked deer as well as some of the fresh deer as well. I think we'll have, maybe we'll have two different dishes of deer. She's preparing the deer. Uh, she mixed in, a, again, that same mixture of spices, the turmeric, the chili powder, then a bunch of black pepper, um, and then paired that with curry leaves, onions, and chilies. She just stuck the, the clay pot on the fire again, getting ready to fry up the deer curry. For the deer curry, what she did again, she heated coconut oil, poured in mustard seed. Mustard seed was the first ingredient to simmer away and fuse in that oil. Uh, then she added in the onions, the curry leaves, the tomatoes, I believe, um, some more chili powder, and then finally that entire mixture, with, because the meat is already mixed with spices, so then that goes in, put the cover on, that's gonna simmer until the juices flow again. I just love how everybody, every cook, every auntie can just casually open coconuts with such expertise in Sri Lanka. Um, and then she has a really like 
really innovative bench uh, coconut grinder. You open up the lid and then you pull out the coconut grinder uh, shredder or knife and then you sit on it. Oh, is she making pull tumble? Oh, she's gonna grind out here. Okay. Kochi sambal. When she popped those chilies, just the aroma, the green, spicious aroma just erupted. It smells so good. Then she added the, the shredded coconut, uh, just kind of sloshed that around, mixed that around, crushed it a little bit with the onions, and then finally a squeeze of lime. That is gonna be a beautiful, beautiful flavor. Okay, the deer curry is ready. She just pulled it off the stove. And what's amazing about a clay pot is how it stays hot. It keeps on boiling, it keeps on cooking. <laughs> Oh, hi, Micah. <laughs> Until as it's... <laughs> but that smells amazing. You can see, you still see the meat like pulsating because of that boil. For the dry smoked deer, what she did is she added the oil, but it's totally different. She didn't add the spices to the meat and mix it around first. Um, and then she tossed in the dried meat, really whooshed that around. That's gonna like just like coat the meat. It's gonna be a dry curry, like a dry spice rub almost. And then some tomatoes in there just for a little bit of tartness. My God. They told us that we've got to be a little bit careful of the monkeys in case some monkeys come, but they haven't. They said they haven't seen the monkeys yet today, so hopefully we will be safe. But they're putting out all the dishes on pot holders over leaves. We've got an entire assembly line, buffet line. There's like a dozen different dishes and I asked Auntie just to make me a plate how she would make it because uh, she could do it so much better than I can do it. Estuti, thank you very much. She, she made that whole plate uh, starting with rice. It's on a lotus leaf plate. Absolutely a beautiful setting sitting under the canopy of trees. Everything is so natural, cooked in clay pots, eating off of lotus leaves. Uh, the, the amount of dishes, the hospitality, the aunties are taking care of us here. Let's begin with that eggplant and then some of the sambal as well. Yep. I cannot wait to taste that sambal that she grind fresh. You can smell the aroma of those chilies. Oh, wow. Yum. Oh, Yum. That sambal. Yeah. It's like vibrant and also she squeezed in that lime to like give it that edge of flavor as well. That like citrusy sourness. And the spice cake. Yes. It's just awesome. Oh, it's beautiful. That is that is flavorful. Okay. And then I can, with the like Yeah, I can just leave on that alone. So good. Straight up that sambal with anything would be good. Yeah. And then with that creamy eggplant. And then I'm gonna I'm gonna taste that deer, the dry deer first. Oh wow, mm-hmm. That dry deer is awesome. It's, <laughs> it's crispy because it's kind of like smoked and fried already and then refried and then just like coated, caked in like chili powder, the coriander, the 
the caramelized onions. And then I'm gonna rotate my plate over here. This is to the other deer, the, the curried deer. Oh. Oh. Mm. Mm. oh, yeah. You can taste the naturalness of that. It's not like fall apart tender. It has some chew to it, but that chew is flavor. And then you taste, you really taste like the coriander seed in here, the black pepper. Mm. Some of the pumpkin. And yeah, you are gonna wanna drain, you're gonna wanna drench every single bite in that sambal. We could go through mounds of that. Rosanna's already getting some more. Yes. I'm gonna serve this. This yes. is so, so good. This is the authentic version and it's just It's incredible. Fabulous. It really is incredible. Yeah. Vibrancy of flavor in all the right directions that you want. Again, again with the creamy pumpkin, that sambal, it's like, it will blow you away. Jackfruit. Oh, mm hmm. Mm. And the young jackfruit, it's starchy. It has like a, almost like a meatiness to it. Fresh out of the garden. <laughs> yes. Mm. These are snake chilies, right? Yeah. Snake Fresh chilies. snake chilies. Should we pop a whole one? Yeah. Green or red? Both, uh, both are similar in heat, but it differences in like the. Fruity floral, like the floral. Ah, the floral fragrance. is, okay. Okay, the I'll try red. Rosanna is awesome, <laughs> always down to pop chilies. Always. Cheers. Cheers. Oh, wow. Mm. Give it a little time. <laughs> okay, I think it takes a little while to kick in the, oh yeah, you can feel <laughs> it in your throat now. But like, it like pops and it's just like completely fruity in your mouth. Yeah. It's like so fruity. Very fruity. Like slightly sour, a little bit acidic. And then the heat, like it sort of builds a little bit on the back of your throat as you keep on chewing, but the flavor in that chili is impressive. Yeah, very, very fragrant. So very fragrant, fragrant, so packed with, packed with like and, fruitiness. And then the peppery kick. I'm feeling the heat now. Feeling the heat? Yeah, yeah. it kind of builds, yeah. Yeah, I can feel my nose running a little bit. <laughs> it's so hot. And he's like, it's a smooth feeling. It is building. It is building. <laughs> it's awesome though. Spice it's Lord. awesome. It's so good. Spice Lord, you have the crown. <laughs> you have the crown. We're both sniffling now. It takes <laughs> it takes a while really for that chili to like kick in. I'm starting to get some tears a little bit. <laughs> yeah. My eyes and are tearing. Eyes are tearing. Look at my eyes. It definitely is a slow, slow kick. Slow kick. Okay, I'm gonna go in for more of that sambal. You're probably gonna wanna just drench every single bite in this sambal, it's that good. Yeah, same here. Oh, this one is cassava? No, it's like a potato. No, that's the umbrella. Oh, okay, umbrella. It's like a fruit. Yeah, it's a fruit. Okay. <laughs> I wish I had my phone. <laughs> I wanna keep the, keep the burn going. Go for it. Yes, yes, cheers. Let's go for it. I'm, I'm so happy I found something to give the Spice Lord Tears and sniffles. <laughs> mm. oh, that crunch. Mm. Not like... Like a fruit. Yeah. It's like you're biting into like a... Apple. Like an apple, that crunch, <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know when your like, mouth is really spicy? You're like... Like liquids. Like the saliva's flow, that's what it is. That's the saliva's flow. One more taste. Oh, I love that initial like fruity pop. That just hit me in the back of the throat. Yeah, that's spicy. That is spicy and wonderful. Oh, you've got a chili too. Yeah. Yes. That's the final, final bite. bite. Mm. Nice to mix it with your food. Mm. Wow, that was a spectacular meal. And you can kind of ball up your lotus leaf. Mm -hmm. Wow, thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think there's a little salt on that to bring out the flavor. That's great. 
Well, that was incredible central Sri Lankan food. Getting to watch them as they cook the dishes, especially the, the eggplant, the different deer dishes, the sambal with the dr uh, shredded coconut and the chilies. That just elevated the experience. And then just, just being able to learn about the culture in Sri Lanka, then eating the variety. One of the best thing about things about Sri Lankan food is the variety of different dishes. So on your plate, you had like 12 different dishes all mixed together. You kind of mix and match, you can eat them separately. It's just an all out harmony, wonderful thing to have such a mixture on your plate. I wanna say a massive thank you to the family for hosting us and then massive thank you to Ruzena. She is the minority taste. She makes videos, she makes recipes. Uh, and again, she has such a passion for eating for food, especially Sri Lankan food. I'll have all her links in the description box below. Go check her out, go subscribe to her, go, yeah, I'll have all the links in the description box. And I want to say a big thank you to you for watching this video. Please remember to give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Leave a comment below. I'd love to hear from you. And if you're not already subscribed, click subscribe and also click that little bell icon so that you get notified of the next video that I publish. Goodbye from beautiful, lush, green, central Sri Lanka. See you on the next video.